Hi everybody, I'm Shane Kohler and I'm the founder of The Living Relationship. Thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to tell you how to stop a relationship from failing and the three phases that every new relationship must go through in order to succeed. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell so you get notified every time we post a new video. And make sure you watch this video all the way to the end so you don't miss any of the important details. And once again, thanks for watching. most people don't realize is that it's not as simple as you just meet someone, fall in love, everything works out, and you live happily ever after. In fact, there are three phases that every new relationship must go through in the first year to year and a half for them to even have some solid ground to stand on. And in this video, I want to talk about each of those phases. I want to talk about a new relationship and what goes into it and what needs to happen within the first year to year and a half of a relationship in order for the relationship to have any chance of lasting. The first stage of a new relationship is something that we like to call projection. And this is actually a really great time in a relationship and I'm sure all of you have been here at one time or another. It's an amazing time in a relationship. This is the time when everything seems beautiful. We call it projection because what we actually do is we project all of our fantasies onto the relationship. Look, we've seen it in movies since we were children and uh, prince and princess meet. They live happily ever after. We've been watching the story play out our entire lives. The problem with the projection phase of a relationship is that you don't see it for what it is. A fantasy. It's a fantasy. It's not real. There is no possible way that you could really know anything about someone, really, within the first couple of months of the relationship. You're not supposed to, but it feels great. It feels great. It feels like love. It feels real. And we want so badly to believe that we found this dream come true. This phase is the time that makes you believe in love as a real possibility. This period of time is where you actually see the possibility of true love in this relationship. And if you didn't go through this experience with the person, you wouldn't have anything to go on to really do the work that's going to have you have true love in this relationship. And I think what happens for most people is they think that, oh, I found the one, it's going to be this way forever. And it's not. And because they believe that they found the one and it's going to be that way forever, they're not prepared for the second phase when it comes. The second phase of a relationship is what we like to call disillusionment. Disillusionment is when all the amazing feels of the first few months of the relationship begin to wear off. And it kind of creeps up on you. You almost don't see it coming. You almost find yourself in the middle of it and go, oh my goodness, how did we get here? How did this happen? Everything was so great, I don't know what happened. And I know those of you who are watching know what I'm talking about. Everything seems amazing, everything seems beautiful, and then it almost, one day you find yourself in the middle of this uh, nightmare that's happening and you don't know how you got there. And when this happens, we tend to think that I need to get back or we need to get back to where we used to be. We need to find a way to get back to being in love like we were. You don't want to find your way back to that. That was not real. What you had in the beginning of the relationship, that was not real. That was a possibility of what you might be able to find yourself and find in the relationship. That was possible. It was a possibility, but it wasn't real. You didn't really have that. This phase is the time where you really start to get to know each other. You start to see flaws. You start to see the things that they were hiding early on in the relationship. Those start to come out now. You start to see the true character of the person. Not the show that they're putting on for you, but you begin to see their true character and they also begin to see your true character. And this is the time when you come together, when you build a foundation and where you build trust that's going to carry on into your future together. 
something I say often when I work with people is that if you think love is the same thing as the feeling and the experience of being in love, you'll find yourself in an endless cycle of disappointing and frustrating and unfulfilling relationships. Love is what comes forth in those times where it is difficult. Love is what you bring to the relationship even when it doesn't feel great. It's important to recognize in the second phase of a relationship that it is just a phase. It's something that every couple has to go through. It's something that you have to get through together in order to really have the kind of relationship you want. So when you're in the middle of it, remember this is a phase. Like these are things we have to work through together. All of this stuff has to come up so we can learn how to reconcile it and we can learn how to be with each other so we have a powerful relationship as we move forward. You see, when new couples say, well, I'm so in love and I've never felt like this and this is the one, I just know it, I always say, well, let's see. Let's see. Let's see how the next six months go for you two. Let's see if the, if the challenges come up, how you handle them together. Let's see if you have the ability to work through it together. And it's so important during this time, during this period of time, to be gentle with yourselves, to be gentle with each other, to avoid getting angry. You want to come together in a way where you're not attacking each other for your differences, but you're actually making allowances for the differences and also having your boundaries of what's important to you and compromising together around all of this stuff. You see, that's what happens during the disillusionment phase. All of the stuff that we were just pretending wasn't there early on in the relationship, now it's all coming to the surface and we've got to learn how, like, how do we bridge that gap? How do we take your differences, my differences, our different points of view and perspectives and ways we feel about things, ways we think about things? How do we take all of that and bring it together in this relationship with each other and how do I get to make compromises for you, you make comp compromises for me, and how do we get to do that in this relationship together? If you can stay open with each other and be accepting of each other and really work together in this second phase of disillusionment, that'll bring you to phase three. And phase three is what we call surrender. It's a point where both partners have surrendered to the relationship. You see, in the disillusionment phase, the relationship doesn't really feel like it's on solid ground. But once you get to phase three, your mutual commitment to the relationship has been repeatedly affirmed in the way that you work things out, in the way that you work together, in the way that you talk to each other, in the way that you speak to each other, in the way that you listen to each other. There's a mutual understanding that you're here to stay. You still have disagreements, but they're not as big as they used to be. You don't get into fights like you used to because the you've learned how to work together. You've learned how to be with each other. You've learned that when she gets angry, I do this. When he gets angry, I do this. And, and you've learned how to be with each other. You've accepted a lot of each other's differences and you have a lot more understanding and you've built more trust in the relationship. When you reach this phase, we say that's where you can really start uh, building your life together. This is the phase where you really begin to build your life, to make plans, to see a future together. When we coach people, we often say, you should reach this point before you get married, before you move in together. We see it happen a lot where couples, uh, they take those big steps, they move in together, they get married while they're in the projection phase, phase one. And because everything seems wonderful and they think it's gonna last forever, they go and they take these big steps together, but then phase two sets in of disillusionment. And they're like, oh, how did we get here? Where did the love go? And that's why we say work through that. If you haven't had any major challenges in your relationship yet, don't move in together. Don't do any, don't take any big action together. Enjoy your time together. Enjoy the new relationship. Wait until those big challenges come up. Wait until those really big ones come up that you don't know if you're gonna make it through it together. And you work through that together. And you'll reach a place of surrender. The magic of a relationship is not found in the rush and the thrill of a new experience. The magic of a relationship is found in you consistently coming together, building a life together, taking on the world together. That's where the magic is found. And if you can do that throughout your first year, you show the promise of a beautiful relationship for many years to come. Again, 
Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you can get updated on all of our new content. I'm going to drop a link below to an article where we go into much more detail on these three phases and all the reasons that new relationships usually fail. That's a free gift, so make sure you check it out. Again, thank you so much, and we'll catch you next time.